Hey, I'm Nawel. I am the co-founder of Negative Space Comics. We're currently publishing our first anthology. Find us on Zoop. Just look up Negative Space Comics. You can also find us on Twitter. Just look up Negative Space and also on Instagram. And you're watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to another episode of Rapid Fire. The concept is simple. It's 11 questions, give or take, 9 to 15 minutes long, give or take, depending on the answers given. And we are in a one-on-one -on -one style interview with a very talented and creative person in the entertainment industry. So, who is our first guest today? Our guest today is a returning guest. If you haven't watched the channel and, and watched the show itself, you've seen him on this show. And in fact, it was, I believe, a couple of months ago at that fact. So I normally don't have guests on back-to-back -back like this, but we have to bring him back on because he has a great campaign on Zoop. It's an anthology. It's a huge anthology that's almost halfway funded. I'm rambling. Let's introduce our guest today. Our guest is, of course, the ever-talented Mello. How are you doing today? <laughs> Doing great, doing great. I, I've had a chance to talk about this anthology and talk about uh, the writing in it for like a week straight now. So it's been amazing. I'm loving it. So then this will be very easy to answer some of these questions at that then as well. Yeah. For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talk. Yeah. So my name is Nawel. Uh, if you feel like in the whole name, uh, co-founder of Negative Space Comics. I run a bunch of comic book competitions uh, to help people get mentorship. And right now we are currently crowdfunding our first anthology, uh, which actually features past winners, finalists, mentors, and judges. One of my own stories as well in there. Why did you want to put together an anthology? Because usually when someone puts together an anthology, you're you're putting in a collection of work together like you are currently here. But why was it important for Negative Space to put this all together? Yeah, I love that question. Our mission is to get people published and to get people in the comic book industry, right? We have aspiring creators, up and coming writers, uh, some really talented people. And let's be real, we know publishing and getting picked up by big publishers is hard. And one thing that people are, that are trying to get into comics need to do more is have short comics out in the world those are the kind of things that really get your work seen uh it's a lot easier to get into an anthology with a short little six eight ten page comic than it is to pitch a five ten twelve issue series whatever it might be to image boom or wherever you're going um so we saw that the best way to help and support a lot of these creators to get seen uh, to further along their career was to give them all an opportunity to write a short. And uh, we put together 15 amazing stories that uh, uh, we're really proud of. What are some of the stories and who are some of the creators that are included in this anthology? And I'm, then I'm going to ask, who are some of your favorites? Oh, the favorites is going to be a tough one. I might have some favorites. I don't know if I'll be able to say <laughs> it, but it's super exciting. We actually have so three winners that we've had so far from our competitions. Robbie Rob Melendez, who was our first ever winner. He's got a really cool story in there that he wrote and is illustrating himself, actually. Uh, Mia Torres was our women's competition winner. Uh, she's got a really fun YA romance story that I actually love. She's got uh, art from Marta Sutui. I don't know how to say her last name. Um, let's see, who else do we have? Ace Hittisimer. Uh They were our student competition winner. Another one who's doing the writing and the art themselves, and they are killing it. They literally just graduated from college four months ago, and they're getting published in this book already. So we're super excited about that one. That's awesome. um, yeah, granted, they also went to SCAD and have been learning and studying comics for four years. So they they definitely know what they're doing. Um, and it looks amazing. Uh, they, their colors are, are wild in their comic. Right. Um, and then just to throw a few names in there that people might recognize because we do also have our mentors and judges who are established professional creators. Um, we have people like Marla Isaac, who uh, worked at Image for years as talent liaison and is now an editor at TKO. We have Teddy Leo, who's an editor at Aftershock. 
Brian Hawkins, who currently has an awesome book, The Vineyard Out with Aftershock. Um, Justin Zimmerman, who's an actual Eisner Award winner uh, with the Love is Love anthology uh, that came out a few years ago. So not only do we have uh, about 10 creators who are new and growing and aspiring creators, some who have never been published before, but we also have some big names that uh, really put some weight here that will, uh, they were all excited to bring some new stories to this. Usually anthologies have a theme of some kind, but being that this is a collection of, of stories, did you have an overall theme or did you just want to showcase the talented people that you've had as winners? It, not not a particular theme that like we're kind of like marketing this book as it's like a theme, uh, but we did have a prompt for all the writers. Um, it being our first anthology, uh, we kind of took our idea of our title, right? Negative Space Comics. Um Negative space means something to us as a company name. There, we see it as this need for a fill of new creators and new voices, underrepresented creators in the industry, and it's about filling that negative space with these creators. Uh, so, the prompt to all the writers was to kind of take that negative space, uh, whether it's aligns with our mission in some way or just taking it as a physical thing of a negative space, as a metaphorical thing, as Okay. the art theory of what negative space does in in comics and in art in general and they all kind of took that in their own way so there's certain stories that are literally using negative space and are literally going on about um stories that use that negative space in specific ways and there's others that are taking it in a more uh, emotional way and talking about death and grief that comes from someone in your life that's missing and it's kind of that negative space that's in your home. So there's a lot of cool ways that people took it. Seeing as this campaign is on Zoop now, as I mentioned previously in in the green room there, you're one of probably two people that I believe that have been on the show, and my memory is horrible at that, that are using the platform Zoop. What exactly does Zoop do for you as a crowdfunding platform? And, and why did you choose Zoop? This is actually our first crowdfunding campaign through Negative Space. We definitely did a lot of research going into uh, which platform to use, right? Because there's a handful out there. Obviously, the Kickstarter is the big one. There's Indiegogo, there's Zoop, and there's a handful of other ones that are growing. Zoop uh, really impressed me when it started putting out campaigns a few years ago. Um, and what I loved most about it is that it's comic specific. Um, it, the, the fact that they would put our stuff out to people that are also looking for comics. Like, yes, Kickstarter has a humongous audience, right? There's millions of eyes on those Kickstarter campaigns, uh, but not all of them care about comics. There's film people, there's game boards, there's photography, there's a little bit of everything. Uh, so Zoop kind of is aimed at comics people, and that's what I loved about it. Um, and let's be real, they're also newer so the fact that they had such a quick and um grounded team to connect with was also very important to me um again this being our first campaign through negative space we really wanted to ask a lot of questions to the people that were running this campaign with us um what they thought was important to put forward as a as a big campaign um how they could support it uh a lot of the stuff that we wanted to ask them number of stuff from behind the scenes and they were all just so ready to help they're on top of it they answer emails quickly um i i couldn't be happier with what they're doing and um even after this one i'm obviously going to be going back to them because i've loved the experience so far and, and you happen to meet the owner as well too at, at new york city comic-con yeah it was it was <laughs> the funniest thing uh i was there walking around uh running into basically trying to catch up and touch base with a lot of people that are our mentors and judges. We had a lot of people at Comic-Con with tables and signings, things like that. So I just wanted to say hi, show my support. Um, and then there was, and I was handing out these little cards to people because we wanted to obviously promote our anthology to as many people as possible. And New York Comic-Con has many people. Um, and while I was standing there, I had this in my hand and this guy just comes over and goes, oh yeah, that's us. And I was like, Oh no no no! This is this is my book. This is this is this is us. And he's like, no 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 no! Like Zoop, like I I run Zoop, and I'm like, I look at him, I'm like, Jordan, and he looks at me, and goes, 
not well. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and it was the the craziest when you're sitting in a space filled with tens of thousands of humans and you're actually running into someone that you only emailed with for like the past month and a half over and over I, the coincidence is just too funny it's so funny when that happens i love it it's it's such a big world but i love it when it shows you that it's actually fairly small yeah definitely especially in the comic scene as well too yeah from the the couple of pages i got to see as well as looking at the campaign itself i mean you have a variety of different art styles you have beautiful colors you have some interesting uh stories as well to hear uh i don't think you answered which ones were your favorites so i think you skirted <laughs> that issue there at least a couple that caught your eye you don't even have to say that your favorites let's just put it that way so i can definitely call out the ones that caught my eye only because there's we're, there's still a lot that are being worked on, right? Mm. So we have the a page for sample and to and to promote a lot of these stories, but there's a handful that are already done, and they've already like, uh, I think this week we're getting three back, fully lettered, that are already fully done, ready to go into the book, and those include Josh Sippy's uh, wingspan. Uh, he's been working with the artist uh, Giles Crawford. Mm. Um, that one really stands out to me because I love how simple it can tell a story that means a lot. Um, the, the story really is about a kid who just writes these little, nice little notes on a paper airplanes and just throws them off, a, off a building just so people can have a, something nice happen, right? Uh, they can get a nice message once a day, but there's a lot in that story that really works. Um, we just got that one back today, actually. Um, same with Justin Zimmerman story. Uh, his story is also very important to them it's very deep and we just got that one back so again the ones that i can actually just see the full thing so of course i've read all the scripts um i i worked with marla isaac uh, as co-editors and so we've read all the scripts we've given notes back we've read the scripts more than once over with each of these but it's comics it's it's nice to like see the story fully done um teddy leo of course being in comics for for so long and being an editor already he was done with his story i think a month ago so he he sent us his script and had an artist already working on it all of this like real quick so his story also really stands out um i do see you have a little bit of a of the graphic on there in my bottom third the the little goldfish in there uh pablo is after seeing the art that he did for Teddy's story, Pablo was like shot up as like one of my favorite artists because it, it really stands out. I love the colors. I love the the style. Um, and, and that one's fun. It's got a, it's got a talking fish. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. You have a lot to go in this particular campaign here. You're like you said, two thirds of the way done as of this interview at the success of this particular campaign. What are you going to take away from it? And say, how are you going to plan for the future campaigns? Maybe not necessarily the size of an anthology. Actually, this goes well. I, I want to do this every single year. It's been a lot of fun. First of all, uh, let's be real. We get into comics to be able to do stuff like this. There's a certain joy in writing stories like I do a lot on the side. There's a certain joy in getting stories back with a lot of art on there. Uh, and there's joy also in helping others get published and putting together a book like this. There's different there's different pieces to the comics world. Um, and if this goes well, if we get funded, which I know we will because we're doing great in our community and the support has been amazing. Um, having another one next year would be big. Uh, our mission, again, like I said, is to get people seen and to get people in the industry and further move their careers along. And if we can start saying that our competition's winners will lead to getting published because we'll be publishing them, um, that would be a huge success for us as a company, as publishers, and me as a creator, editor, writer, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, uh, if this goes well, we'll have one every single year, and then we can just keep moving ahead, doing what we do. Being that this is your your first campaign itself, especially for crowdfunding, how did you plan for this campaign and, and what research did you take? Yeah, so we did the usual research that most people would think to do going into a campaign, right? You're looking at the, the crowdfunding platform, you're looking at the printers, you're looking at timelines, you're looking at what your goals are and all that. But we luckily had a secret weapon. Um, one, one of the contributors in this book, Carrie Harris, she was actually a finalist in our women's competition, amazing writer, 
Uh, I'd love to get in the chance to talk to her plenty of times since that competition finished back in February. But she reached out when we first announced that we wanted to do this. And she was like, oh, by the way, like I used to do this as a full-time job. Uh, her, She used to work in helping companies put out campaigns and break down what works and what doesn't and numbers and all that stuff. Uh, so she was able to look at our rewards, our add-ons, our timeline and all that stuff and like plug it into um, this fancy Excel that she had that did all the formulas of like what will work, how much we need and all that stuff. Um, so looking at every printer possible, which there's a handful of out there that are looking at comics in particular, the platforms, uh, the artists and all this stuff was important. But luckily we had a secret weapon. Carrie Harris has been um, ridiculously helpful in prepping for all of this. Um, and let's be real, also it's it was finding ways to use our, our creators. We have, with all the writers and all the artists, we have about 25 creators on this book. Um, so obviously that helps uh, when you're doing crowdfunding, it's not just one person that has to go out and find their own audience and their friends and family to, to, to buy in. We have 25 people to do that now. Um, so that's been super helpful in finding the best ways to kind of like rally everyone and get everyone to, to feel like they're a part of this and to, to push for everyone else as much as they're pushing for themselves. That's been big. Is there anything that I haven't touched on you'd like to showcase those that are watching and listening to this interview, but besides the social media and where we can find you, that's obviously at the end of the interview. I would, I would, I would just say, I would, I would love to push on the, on the fact that this is, this book is very important to a lot of people, right? Um, I can sit here and talk about how important it is to negative space or to me because I'm putting it together and it's coming through this company or whatever it might be. Um, but all these people cared enough about their craft and about their passion for writing comics that they chose to enter competitions to, to get mentorship, to learn more about this this world and this career they they care to to be a part of this world and to say that they've been published and to get a deal with a publisher bigger than what this anthology is doing um so there's a lot of people on this book that are writing on these stories being published um they all want to be comics creators they're all amazing writers it's it's not just me saying that we Everyone that's in this anthology has gone through, we'll call it a vetting process, but really they went through our competitions, right? So that, that means that it wasn't me saying that they're good writers. It means that it's our professional mentors and judges who have read their scripts before and who have said, yeah, this person is a badass writer. They know what they're doing and they deserve to be in the comics industry. Um, and this is just a way to show off some of their short stories. So that's, that's kind of what I try to put out there as much as possible. Um, not only are they talented, but they're passionate and they're ready to make comics better. Um, so for that alone, I hope people just want to back it and support it. And if you can't back it, like I always say, just share it. It's it's free to retweet something. So the more that we can get these, these eyes on this book, um, it's going to make people's dreams come true. It actually will. Well, I do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking Rapid Fire. Thank you so much for coming on the show as always. Oh, thank you for having me. I, I had a blast last month and I had a blast again. So I overstayed my welcome two months in a row. So I'll wait a little bit longer before I ask to come back, but uh, it's been great. Thank you. Not a problem. Hey, the door's always open. Please come back anytime. I'll, I'll come back next year. I'd like to hear from you in January because I, I have a lot of fun here. <laughs> Like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. And of course, on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash TGT Media. And if you'd like to support the channel on our Patreon account, which is patreon.com forward slash TGT Media, I'd greatly appreciate it. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening, watching on. Two Geeks Talking.